Can you believe it? We are just about half done with class. I am enjoying seeing your posts on Galatians and Justification of the Spirit and also Colossians and Christ's Lordship. Uh, again, the resources that we are looking at here in the dictionaries in this class, I can't emphasize enough how important those are. I have enjoyed skimming back through these articles and just recognizing the gold mine we have here, and I trust that you are uh, gathering as much as you can. I'm happy to see your thoughtful interaction with one another. Now, as we approach the weekend, we have the exam coming up, and that exam is going to require you to be familiar with the books that we have studied so far, Romans, all the way through what we've covered here uh, this second week of class. So be reading, again, Ephesians, Philippians. We have not had uh, discussion forums on those, but all of these books are, are fair game, and we want you to be familiar with them and interact with them. I want to pray for you and then just talk about a couple of additional resources to recommend for further study. Let me pray. Lord, help students as they progress here this second week. Give them encouragement, uh, and with the exam coming, help them to enjoy your word and to become more and more familiar with it. We ask in Christ's name. Amen. A couple of resources I want to recommend here for you. First, uh, Michael Gorman's book, A Possible of the Crucified Lord, and uh, he provides a survey of, of Paul's literature with the framework of the inbreaking that has taken place in Christ and our participation in Christ. Here he writes about Galatians and the work of the Spirit in justification. One of the few authors that I have found recently that, that is bringing this out, let me just quote a, a bit here for you. Paul asserts the divine origin of and scriptural precedent for his apostleship and gospel. He interprets Christ's death on the cross as an act of the Son's faithfulness toward God. This death was also an apocalyptic incursion into the human predicament, a benign invasion, so to speak. As such, it inaugurated the promised new covenant and the promised new creation. Both, of, both realities, actually a single reality, refer to the age of the Spirit, who liberates those who believe the gospel in order to be believe the gospel in order to be God the Father's adopted children and who poured is poured into their hearts not that we are God but this is God's work in Christ and we are adopted this is an apocalyptic reality it doesn't mean that it doesn't have historic roots in terms of Israel's history but this is a breaking in I think it helps us to appreciate all that Christ has done if we see this breaking in C.S. Lewis wrote similarly in uh, mere Christianity this is divine invasion and you may want to look at mere Christianity, even if you're thinking about a, a Christmas Bible study. Second quick resource here, this is a big book. N.T. Wright, <clears throat> The New Testament's World, Michael, Michael Bird helped put this together. I don't agree with anything any author writes. don't even agree with everything I've written in the past. I may come back and nuance. N.T. Wright can be a polarizing figure, but this is a remarkable book, and I would recommend you getting hold of it. He writes here... Uh, Wright and Bird about Colossians that we're looking at this week. Colossians 1, 15 to 20 is one of the most remarkable early Christian writings, articulating the way that only poetry can, the symmetry of and the coherent movement between creation and new creation. I trust that you're appreciating the the poetic language in many places that Paul writes in the New Testament. So, a couple of resources for you here. Enjoy studying and enjoy reading, especially these epistles as you get ready for the exam. Now, everything wraps up Sunday night, 11.59 p.m. I will grade on the 23rd, uh, and so you'll have your week one and two grades before Christmas. Next week, uh, take the week off. Enjoy your, your family, your church, and then we'll pick back up during the first week of the new year, during that, that week where we have the New Year's, we will be doing class. So uh, we'll pick it up then. All the best to you. Merry Christmas.